Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else we find interesting. That is one Jill Bryant. Hello, Jill Bryant. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Very good. Having a really good day today. <laughs> that's, that's probably always for the best, man. Uh, <laughs> not, not playing rough with your cat? Nope. <laughs> My hubby does that. I don't. I don't get scratches. <laughs> Before we went live, we were, Steve, Steve was showing off like his, uh, he's like, oh, look, I've inflicted this on myself by attacking and playing with a cat. Like, yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. What's new with you? Oh, boy. Well, had fun yesterday playing Trackmania Stadium 2, and we had some really challenging maps to get through, but they were fun. <laughs> And I know the ones, I think there were three, or no, two, or three, two or three that I didn't get through. And I know I will with practice. <laughs> Gonna have to practice. That is, uh, yeah. there, <laughs> I, knew, I knew it was coming. There was a voting system what, between the maps that we play. And I was like, here it comes. And then I saw a down vote. I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, I upvoted everything. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was displeased. But yeah, we're, we're kind of moving on a little bit. Past couple of weeks, been going through... It's so really simple, you know, just, I mean, challenging, you know, it's not like drive straight, drive straight to exit, but, you know, just getting back into wall rides and stuff like that. So we're moving it up a notch. Didn't I say before we started yesterday, I'm like, there's some maps, people are not going to be able to make it around. Yeah, you did. In five minutes. Preface that. Yeah. Before I was we one of those people, <laughs> mind you. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. There was a map I didn't finish and I'm going to have to go back <laughs> probably this afternoon and see if I can take it on. But uh, what do I got? The Psychonauts 2 was out, everybody. Mm-hmm. For Linux. Woo-hoo. Finally. Mm-hmm. I was kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked. We talked about it on uh, Linux Teamcast Weekly, and it was kind of a surprise to all. I was like, what? Oh, right. Because the, they did a FIG campaign, if you remember FIG, you know, crowdfunding and all that. And they said, hey, yeah. we're going to do a Linux version. I just forgot that was ever going to, you know, Microsoft bought double fine i'm like well we're probably never gonna get that linux version lo and behold yesterday there it was unreal Woo-hoo. engine 4 downloaded it it's not proton it's native and uh you know gave me my 60 bucks I'm like, here you go i only had about 15 minutes to play around with it definitely gonna play some more hopefully this afternoon if i get some of that magical time and um it's a really nice looking game very performant Apparently, Arthurian said it ran very well on a Steam Deck, so which I had nice. to assume because even on my 3060 at 4K with the render is set to about 75%, I was holding 60, 75. Oh, all right. Right on. Having a good time with that. Also, if everything catches fire, crashes, and burns, that's because we're testing out EGL in favor mm. of um, GLX with OBS, with the capturing system. It's a pull request that was seeking testers. Hi, we're testers. <laughs> we're going to see if that explodes. Should <laughs> okay. Be fun. But the big news, <laughs> the big news that we got to talk about is something that we had to double check. Yeah. We did because we were like, has system 76? I mean, look, look, we were doing research. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I Old mean, school. Yeah. Website. We were 2005, <laughs> man. System 76. They've teamed up, they partnered. With HP to give us yeah. a little something. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the, then this is just such exciting news. And it actually was tweeted by Carl Rochelle, the founder and CEO of System76 last Friday, which is when I saw it. So System76 has teamed up with HP to make an HP laptop preloaded with Pop! OS. And yes, I have a shirt on, a Pop! OS shirt on. <laughs> I love Pop! OS. So this laptop is called the HP Dev One, and as the title says, it is built for developers. It is not yet out. It is coming soon, and you can get on an email list to get notified when it does uh, land. And it's actually really nice for the price. At a price of $1,099, it features one of my uh, favorite and important things, a Linux keyboard with a super key, so a proper Linux super key, not the Windows key. An 8-core AMD Ryzen 7 Pro processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, 1 terabyte NVMe M.2 storage, uh, 14 uh, inches diagonal FHD anti-glare display, and AMD Radeon graphics. 
And I thought that was pretty nice for that price point. I wish the memory was a little higher, but but that's still pretty good. <laughs> it's not too bad. And my first thought is this is yet another weapon in your arsenal if you're stuck with, you know, you can only at work we have approved vendors. Like you can order yeah. from this company, this company, this company. I'm like up until now, I'm like, okay, well, I'll get a Dell with Linux on it. Or maybe you'll get it with Linux with a side of DOS, as we talked about last week. <clears throat> But this would be a handy option if you're stuck with buying HP at work. Like, oh, now we yeah. can get HP with Linux preload, and it's great. It's approved. Uh, I want some details on uh, how support's going to be handled with this. Yeah, that's going to be very, very interesting. This is what I'm curious about, because who do I call? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, does busters. It, <laughs> is there HP a special busters. number? It's like, press one if the hardware is knackered. Press two if the software is knackered. And um, yeah, yeah do, you, do you get in touch with System76 or are you can deal with HP? How is that going to work out? I'd yeah. like some details on that. I'm sure I'm not alone on that. But um, yeah, 14 inch, a little bit on the small side for my taste. Just personal like that. This is like a, it's kind of a big tablet, but you know, it's portable. Let's get that going on. Mm -hmm. I want to know about memory upgradability though. Yeah. Because is what Jill said. The memory. Yeah. 16 gigabytes is a low end in 2022. That's, yeah. like, hey, we're just getting something out. Especially so, for developers. Yeah. You know, and when they're doing AI and Kubernetes and clusters and code that re requires a lot of processing power. Exactly. It would be good to have a 32 gigabyte option. And the 16 gigabyte is soldered on, which is a little bit disappointing. <laughs> That's why you can't upgrade it. But that may change in the future, or they'll come out with a, a 32 gig gigabyte uh, model, or maybe even 64. That would well, be great. You know, in the defense, at that price point, 16 gigs is about what I would expect, though. I guess so. I did just pick up a, a laptop that was just over a thousand that had 32 gigabytes and a 4K screen. Fun. So they do exist. US based tech support. <laughs> <laughs> for your Linux operating system. No. And see, that's the Im the important things about this. It's got System76, Pop OS, with <laughs> great customer support. <laughs> well, maybe you look at like the big ones like HP, Dell, Compaq. Is Compaq even still around? Probably. Um, and you're like, oh, <laughs> man, I don't want to buy a laptop from the man. I want a single source, free range, independent laptop framework yeah this the is exciting darlings they've been just, at this point i'm just gonna sit back not hoping but i'm like where's the where's the bad thing where's the bad part about this nothing but good news coming out of the framework crowd they released a modular laptop last year mm -hmm. you know it's been a full year can you believe it i mean wow. since the upgradable no. laptop that could Hey, I, f I feel like we were just talking about it on LWW a few months ago. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it turns out Intel's released their 12th gen hotness, and maybe you need slash want an upgrade. Traditionally, this is going to require taking your old laptop out back and putting it down. A double so if you got a Mac, then you got to buy a new one. That's how you upgrade a laptop. No, 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 no. See, so keeping true to their word framework, they've released a 12th gen Intel Core TM whatever upgrade, but it's 538 bucks. There it is. Look at that. Boom. Pop it out. Nice. Pop a new one in. Pull out your old one. Pop in that 12th gen goodness. And yeah. Now, if you're upgrading the main board, you got to check out some of the open source designs that have been released uh, earlier this year because they want people to reuse their yeah, existing so motherboard. Cool. Yeah. You can make some really cool, like usable cyber deck. things. It looks like right? a cyber deck. Yeah. <laughs> Those are all, cool. <laughs> they also wanted to point out their, um, their dirt. Yeah. They have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet module nice. yeah yeah very nice which yeah, is and that's another something thing that i've been wanting yeah yeah i don't understand why anybody wants 2.5 gigabit peasants uh but <laughs> it is available and um uh, no like the different little modules that you can get with the framework and just roll your own because for years and i mean years from when i was in the air 24 7 flying back and forth i had a bag with my laptop and I had another bag filled with batteries because we could swap out batteries, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, back in the day, get off my lawn. And I could tell you like, oh, I got to go from here to here. And I was like, how many batteries is that going to take to watch a DVD on a spinning drive? 
This is reality. <laughs> yes, this absolutely. Is not, not something you deal with in modern time, though, because your battery's built in. Like, replacing it can possibly be a nightmare. But we were told, well, you had to do it this way. You had to do it with this, and everything had to be integrated, soldered on. That's the only way we make it nice, sleek. You know, if we tried to build a modular system, and I'm talking all other laptop manufacturers, it's going to be this big clunky mess. This is one of the reasons I adore Framework, because they showed up and said, false. Here it is. It can be done. You just don't want to do it, because you're razor-thin margins. And yet, Framework's been able to release very nice, very slick-looking laptops at a reasonable price. Yeah, absolutely. And they've been listening to not only the tech community, but the Linux community. And they've spent the last year gathering feedback from from um, the early Linux users and uh, tech adopters to refine the product as they uh, scale up and improve it. And I think it's really wonderful that they actually, what was really cool is they dropped the price of the first generation framework laptops. And then you can upgrade to the latest modules for better performance whenever you'd like. And this lives up to their motto of sustainability, upgradability, and repairability. And they're doing it. They're doing exactly what they said in their mission statement when it originally came out. And what's really cool is the Framework Laptop DIY Edition 11th Gen Intel now starts at $679 instead of $749. And the Laptop 11th Gen, you can get that one. Uh, it dropped $100 to $899. So that's... That's sweet. That's really nice that they're supporting also backwards compatibility with their modules as well. <laughs> and Fedora 36 works great out of the box with full hardware uh, functioning, including Wi-Fi and the fingerprint reader on the 12th gen frameworks. Awesome. And 11th gen. <laughs> I maybe made it a point in the post like, hey, we're even working on Linux for the battery life. And like, these are not just like, oh, yeah, put it on Put Linux on it, nerds. Just give us money. No, they do care about their Linux ecosystem and yeah. making sure everything is together and open source, which is brilliant. So, yeah, at eight ninety nine, mayhaps. Here you go, framework. Give me this. <laughs> give me this laptop in a tablet format. Ah, uh, yeah, that would be perfect for that. Desolder yeah. the keyboard. Give me that x eighty six tablet that I can carry around. I'll give you nine hundred bucks for one of those. Or no, yeah. yeah. I will, man. I can see you using that. Yeah. They don't put an Ethernet <laughs> module in it and confuse people. Yeah. <laughs> there I, you go. I won't use any of that silly Wi Fi. I'll just get, you know, like a 200 meter um, Ethernet cable and drag it around the house. It'll be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so Linux is hey. a kernel and 518 is out. And this is probably one of the rare times I didn't get a chance to build it before the show to go, hey, it works and we're running it now. Unfortunately, I didn't. But there is a new version, a bunch of big changes. Yeah. Well, then you did you did get to install the release candidate, uh, 5.18, I think you did. 5.17 RC2. Oh, it was 5.17. That's on okay. Jackbox right now. And I, there, okay. I have a very strict, like, you know what? It's working. Let's leave okay. it alone. <laughs> so, yeah. So, last month we talked about the Linux kernel 5.18 release candidate 1. And now, just last Sunday... As he always does, Linus Torvalds officially released the stable version of the Linux kernel 5.18. And there's something very interesting added to the kernel. So Linux kernel 5.18 includes an Intel driver that actually could allow the chip maker to enable new silicon features after users pay for a license. Intel's software-defined silicon, also known as SDSI, driver will be supported on Xeon CPUs and could be limited to future server and workstation processors. <laughs> well, honestly, you know, in, Intel, you know, could, for example, use software upgrades to tailor CPU features to data center or Intel's other workloads. Tried this before, Joe. Yeah, I, and I was just, I, I had uh, recalled memories of something like this done before. If you were, this was before <laughs> my time, but uh, I did never see this in Meatspace, but it was, uh, I think, towards the late 90s. 
and mm-hmm. I think it was Best Buy in the United States. I don't know if they ever did it globally, but they had a where you could buy a CPU and you know you buy your tower, but if you wanted yeah. to upgrade it, you could purchase a card to unlock the digi- uh, additional megahertz. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, fortunately that you know, unfortunately that was on the the desktop consumer, but this is supposed to be for enterprise, so. <laughs> Hopefully that's where it stays. <laughs> you know what? I can just see Intel. Intel's like, no, the average consumer's too smart. Yeah. They, they realize, you know what we need? The only way sales executives, <laughs> we can trick them into buying this. Yeah. But it actually, you know, really could be useful for improving workloads, especially, you know, with the, the, the huge growth of AI and whatnot. And maybe Intel's just like, you know, we can make this more efficient and help our customers. They got to make it cheaper. Let me tell you the use case for this is I think about this all the time because like the next thing I plan on upgrading is I'm just, I'm patient. I'm waiting for it is upgrading Threadripper, but Threadripper prices are just astronomical, but I'll eventually be able to track down a 2970 WX do I need a 2970 WX? Yes, I do. But for how long do I need it? Get it? I need a 2970 WX for about 11 hours a week. Now, mm-hmm. this is a very small issue, but I've had this thought. It's like, wouldn't it be nice if I could just lease that for a few hours a week, save some money, timeshare CPU? Like, can I just yeah. enable the rest of these features, get all that performance? then dial it back. Now, that sounds like mm. a horrible dystopia, I know, but... <laughs> but... A good option. If Intel could sell me a chip like that, you got to scale this to a company. Like, you know what? 30% of the time, we need this much compute power. The other... Yeah, we can dial it up. And I mean, it, it's like flexible. But then again, if you need that type of flexibility you're usually um outsourcing that you know cloud Mm -hmm. dm yeah true but i don't know i mean i understand the thought process behind it and i would even get behind something like that but yeah for consumer stuff i don't see how it could make sense yeah absolutely and we we know that that failed before for consumer (laughs) (laughs) oh come on they just want to see how dumb people were yeah oh oh no we went too dumb Mm. (laughs) yeah so some other interesting features of Linux kernel 5.18 is that it now supports 64-bit integrity checksums on NVMe devices. It's actually, that's something we've needed on Linux. And it also has support for HP laptops using Realtek audio. Very nice, because sometimes that's an issue. <laughs> I've got some old HP laptops. and How can you, you know, tell, Joe, audio doesn't work under <laughs> Linux? <laughs> well, on those laptops, I just installed a USB audio dongle, <laughs> and there, there you have it. There it works. <laughs> or you can, you know, uh, use one of your, you know, any other external uh, amps and whatnot to get sound working. <laughs> so that that's actually a really nice feature for all those people using HP laptops with Realtek audio, and what's a uh, also cool is that FreeSync is enabled by default in the AMD GPU driver. We had talked about this with the release candidate, but it, it's it's nice to see it official and here. So very awesome. And the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W picks up full mainline Linux kernel support in this release. So very important release, actually. <laughs> well, now I have another reason to remind myself that I have a Pi Zero W2 yes. I've never done anything with. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe next time. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> There's a video that just hasn't formed that we're going to use that for. I just haven't put 2 and 13 mm-hmm. together on that. That's a pretty chunky update. Um, mm-hmm. I look forward to... You know what? I'm probably going to keep Jackbox on 5... What I'm waiting for is the... Um, Five something after you know five sixteen or after long term term support. Oh, okay. So I can just stabilize that, so I can go back and redo all the benchmarks for all the audio interfaces. Mm, oh, and not have to, Yeah, I don't want to. Like, <laughs> yeah, I did all that. And, oh, let's redo because that takes Keep a couple of it. days. Yeah. All right, mm-hmm. cool. Uh, what do we get up next? Oh, right. 
Yeah, that's your awesome video you made, Ven. A video mm -hmm. that was probably about seven months in the making when I roll wow. it all, all the way back. I, I think about when did I have this initial idea of trying to explain this? Well, I, something I've always wanted to try to explain, but you got to come up with a way to do it correctly or an a attempt to do it correctly. And that one thing is the audio IP, audio over IP system that we're using right now to communicate because, you know, traditionally if you get, I see other people's like OBS setups and stuff like that, They'll have OBS open and I'll have like a one window here and one window here and they're doing like multiple capture and their audio is just a hot mess. I use multiple PCs to do that and all of our audio comes over here. The Jackbox, which is another PC and it's doing all the stuff like our mix minus and it's doing the basic, very minimal vocal processing that no one, because, you know, here we go. We, we can be a regular, we can be a regular stream. I don't even know how well that's coming through. Can you even hear uh. me, Joe? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're you're pretty mumbly <laughs> sounding. Pretty mumbly. Yeah. You're going through a broadcast mic with no processing whatsoever. Yeah. So I wanted to show people how we take advantage of NetJack to do that, and it's kind of a win. It's a it's a stealth win for Linux because there are multiple audio over IP systems, but they're proprietary. They require extra hardware, and they most certainly are not open source. Things like AVB, MADI, and um, what else could we use? I have it right at the beginning of the video. I can't even think about it. Uh, but they exist here. Let me just go over to the video. Talk for me, video. <laughs> <laughs> Dante. Dante. <laughs> there we go. Now, that's another thing. So, everything you wanted to know about NetJack, but didn't know to ask because you didn't know what a NetJack was. I'm going to try to answer it in this. In about 10 minutes or less, what I try to do is condense a 45-minute talk with 15 minutes of Q&A at the end into a 10-minute video. Now, if you've ever been curious about audio IP on Linux, this should get you pointed in the right direction. And I go over the reasons of, hey, how much would this take in hardware to reproduce? All of that, all of that, all those interfaces, mm -hmm. five audio interfaces, 19 points of failure. We can condense that with the NetJack into four Ethernet cables. So the mm -hmm. savings, maintenance alone, We'll get you in the right way. I mean, it is very much a handy open source way to move audio between multiple PCs. And again, it doesn't require any special hardware. Walk you through that. If you just want to see it for entertainment or if you've just been net check curious, there it is. You will now, I promise you at the end of that video, kind of understand what a net jack is. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared of it. I even have example commands and I broke down the cryptic um, settings that are wrong on their wiki page. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know you were talking about that. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that's something, see, things like that you forget to tell people because Jordan has a scaled down version in his studio of uh, yeah. NetJack set up with his laptop and his main PC. And I'm like, here, just use NetJack 2 and do this, do this. And like, it won't work. And I'm like, what are you using to set this up? And he took, it's like, the documentation's wrong, I guess. Ooh, right. I had to decrypt that a long time. So, yeah, all of it's correct in the video. And it'll work as shown. So, yeah, there you go. NetJack. Yay. It's uh, it's not your parents' NetJack. <laughs> <laughs> Get any thoughts on that, Jill? Other than NetJack yeah. or Burr? Yeah. No, I, I think this is wonderful. We needed a, a really easy to understand, easy explanation of what NetJack is. I've played around with it, so I understand it a little bit. But it's I, I'm not a, as advanced in that topic as Ven is. <laughs> He's the guru. <laughs> I just read the manual and realized the manual was wrong, so I rewrote it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if you've been sitting around the house, you're like, man, I want to set up a broadcast studio, like a real one. Mm -hmm. Give that a look. That'll get you started. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the ways we're able to do that is with your help. And you want to help out the show, share the show, like, subscribe, all the fun stuff that you'd normally do. But we've got some super, super special people that back us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. we got a gang of membership levels and something yeah. sweet on each and every one up to and including access to our Discord. Of course, we always have IRC open completely for free, and it's even bridged to our Discord in the live channel. We're not trying to keep anybody out, but we got a little side 
hustle over there, our super secret room that we're hanging out in the other six days of the week, you get a couple extra shows. We got a bonus show that we do, the pre pre super shows, which is our week in review, what we're up to, media review, all the other stuff that's not necessarily 100% Linux related. We do that um, before the show on Saturday, but you also have access if you want to listen to that live. You get live and uncut version in podcast format. If you just need, you know, an extra five hours a week of people talking about stuff that you find interesting in the background, we got you covered there. And things like the NetJack video. I do early access stuff. I'm like, hey, man, if you're going to help us out, help us make this stuff, you're going to get first crack in it. Open QA. I got that process. Like, do you see anything that needs to be changed? Got ideas? And we can affect change. We can work together to try to educate some people about the penguins. Now, we got a couple of <laughs> people we need to think, starting with uh, NM. How do you want to NMAVOR? Maver. Maver. Resubbed. Resub for the fourth four time. time. Yeah. <laughs> and you know it. Yeah. As increased her pledge, is now an executive producer with everything that executive producing gets. I mean, it's a he's, hard job, but. Oh, he's been so awesome. And he's been so helpful to me. He's been looking out for me for some good prices on RX 6800s and 6900s. So mm. Thank you so much, uh, you know it. Uh, I, I'm getting ready to make the choice <laughs> and and pick a card. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's lovely getting new people in the community. That's mm -hmm. it's just always been like, wait a minute. I've said this before, but I get to see it over and over again. Like, oh, and um, everybody has a good time. And then when they discover, like, we got a pretty chill place where we get to hang out. Uh, yeah. If you want to pick us up uh, gifts, trinkets, and treats, <laughs> we got a support thing. Uh we, you know, we got merch, we got PayPal donations, Bitcoin, all that. But we do have yeah. studio wish lists. If you want to see things in RGB that blinks, <laughs> Jill's got one. Just head over to LinuxTeamCast.com. <laughs> if you want to see mugs with penguins and this poor Kingston hard drive that's been there. I remember when that thing was $20. Yes. Um, yeah. Man, inflation. <laughs> Yeah, and inflation. I got it actually one. came down in price. <laughs> you remember, it, for a while there, it was over fifty dollars. Right. Yeah. I got one for the studio. If you get anything off this, I don't have much. I got like six things sitting around in the studio, yeah. but you end up on this wall back here for the find up standing cannibals. We got a collection of people who've helped me. You know, kind of like a game genie. We're cheating, getting ahead, yeah. <laughs> doing some more stuff, which is awesome. With your support, we do thank each and every one of you. Now, slice of pie something short this week because we're going to be talking about turing pie you know a machine learning pie a robot pie if you will That's yeah what a robot pie man looks Ooh. Like. oh that looks like sweet potato pie <laughs> 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 like a, a snowman or a robot yes <laughs> i don't it looks like it's going to kick in your door and uh, steal old people's medication and they didn't have old glory insurance so they're just out of luck or is that apricot or peaches maybe i don't oh, know huh. But I do know Turing Pi 2 has raised $1 million in a single day, Joe. I know. it's This is actually ama amazing. So, yeah, the mini ITX cluster computer, the Turing Pi 2, has just launched their Kickstarter. And with 20 days still to go, it has passed its $64,000 goal with almost $1.4 pledged. <laughs> pretty pretty uh, impressive. Probably one of the most successful Kickstarter campaigns <laughs> ever actually that that is really impressive and what's really cool is that the uh, turing pi 2 supports a brand new module the turing rk1 which features the rock chip rk3588 octa-core processor and up to 32 gigabytes of ram and it also supports the raspberry pi compute module fours which can be used via adapter in its four sodium slots and you can also use NVIDIA Jetson Nano, TXT NX boards, and Xavier NX boards modules too, or mix and match a combination that suits your needs. And I think that is kind of cool that you can can put uh, different different brands of microcomputers into the slots. <laughs> that that's actually really cool. They don't have to be matched. 
It's pretty neat. You got to think about it. $209 for the basic kit. And there's only 73 left. By the time, if you're listening to this in podcast format, probably sold out of that. But what do we got at the next tier? We got a couple of things in here. Let's oh, scroll down. Yeah, Two- there's a one for 219 as well. 219. How many is left? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> none. I guess. None. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, hang on. That one says limited. 73 or 14. Maybe that one's just full on. Full on. So, oh, no. Yeah. Limited 474 left. Uh, two. You can get okay. two for $409. Okay. How much? How, how much for them to take me out to dinner? Um, hmm. 419, all gone, 199. You, oh, come on. I, I expected at least like one crazy thing that was like a couple of thousand dollars. All right, fine. Fine. This I'll is just why they I think two. they've done so well, is they don't have one listed for several thousand dollars. You gotta have You've got one. them reasonable tiers. <laughs> you gotta have one. We you, you know, we, we we go out for like I don't know, tax max, I get a foot massage or something like that. I mean Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> It's really fun to see. Really glad that they did so well. And, you know, they've already proven, most importantly, that they can ship product. So you're going to be looking at estimated delivery of September, a couple of months down the road. Pretty much tells me they get everything taped out. It's done. They've done a test run and they're ready to put in the main order. So we're gauging interest at this point to see how big that order needs to be. If that's something you're looking in, even if you just want to pick up something to store your compute modules that you bought because you're addicted to buying Raspberry Pi devices. Yeah, there you go. There you go. (laughs) All right. Uh, at the beginning of the show last week, I brought up something. Yeah, what did you bring up, Vin? Dare, dare I say, I asked the internet a question, Jill. Yes, and you did. I was kind of curious, though, because it's not something you typically think about. Like I, I have a bunch of monitors surrounding me right now, and sometimes I lose the cursor because, you know, it's kind of hard to do it on the 43-inch monitor. It's pretty easy to find the cursor. But then I get over to one that is in portrait mode and it's a high yeah. resolution portrait. Lose it there. And sometimes it might be over here on the 28 inch, which is another 4K monitor. I'm like, ah. And so what I do is I end up just like spinning around the trackball until I, you know, T Rex <laughs> sense motion. I'm like, ah, there you are. I'm like, is, is there an application or something like that? Maybe a hotkey combination and like make the cursor like, hap- like RGB seizure mode or something. Yeah. Well, turns out maybe there is. Uh, yeah. Synthetic Owl wrote in mm-hmm. and they're like, Vin Zenbuntu binds XFC for fine cursor to Super F1. So Debian might have that too. All right. So this this got me on like XFC for fine cursor. And I typed that in. I'm like, oh, it didn't do anything. You know, I just went to the console, punched that in, see if it was going to do something. I'm like, okay, fine. Maybe not, maybe not. But then Isha writes in, <laughs> these came in literally <laughs> in the same hour. Uh, wow. <laughs> Isha says, ah, uh, duh, of course there is. Are you so old now that you've forgotten about the magic of X dude? X dude, that's what I call it, XD tool. I don't know. <laughs> Have you seen the guide I made about XD tool, about how to remap the Elgato, uh, Elcom Huge 5? No, ah. I know it's a thing. Uh do you also require assistance creating the special key, granddad? <laughs> or you think you can still manage that bit on your own? Cheers. Isha. <laughs> Isha. <laughs> You're awesome. Now, I was able to put these two together. And something we were talking about in the pre-show, go back and listen to that if you are a patron, is yes. Because I don't spend much time in the accessibility functions because I've never had a need to. And But, you know, something like, hey, let's temporarily enlarge the cursor naturally i guess the settings are going to be in there and sure enough um jill was looking around we were were playing the home game together earlier Mm -hmm. and there's an option to um find the cursor like to send out you know a blinkatron where the cursor is so you go to that page and accessibility which i did and you know it's you have to enable the accessibility first, then you can enable that, then you're able to launch and actually get something out of launching XFC find cursor. Yeah. In that menu. Then then it, it just tells you they're like, hey, by the way, you can rebind this to I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. Uh where do you have to go? You have to manually rebind it to um 
a key using the keyboard shortcut. You'd back out of that, go into keyboard, go into keyboard shortcuts. But then after you're done with that, make sure you back out of that. Then you go into window manager and check for predefined keyboard shortcut conflicts that it won't tell you about until after you press that button. Mm -hmm. Dear anyone working with XFC4, all that needs to be on that same page. Yeah. Because you're already in dealing with somebody with accessibility issues. None of that's like that. I click on that. It should say, hey, what button would you like to bind this to? Do a simple enough check to say, oh, by the way, this is already bound to this other thing. Pick something else. Just unsolicited advice right there because that's a multi-step yeah. process too. I could easily see somebody just tapping out of that and like, you know what? I'm just going to use KDE or I'm going to use GNOME or I'm just going to use you. I'm just kidding. No, I using Unity. But you get my point. You get my point. And uh, once you yes. do all that and you do bind it, you click on it and it sends out like a radar signal. Yeah, and, red. Bright red. Spot. Yeah. Golden yeah. earring starts playing in the background. It's pretty weird. Uh, but, hey, that's going to do it for this week, Joe. We're at 35 yeah. minutes. We got to bounce. Any fa- okay. famous closing words? Radar love? I don't know. Radar love? Uh, how about go out there and make some Linux fun? Woo-hoo. Do that. When you're at it. <laughs> Makes them awesome. All right, yeah. everyone. Here come the credits. <laughs> Aw, we have so many Ha-ha. of our wonderful patrons in chat. And something just flicked by my screen, but I couldn't read it in time. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of accessibility issues, I need a magnifier sometimes. <laughs> so we have right now in chat, we've got Inertia. We've got my husband, Steve. We've got Artharin. We've got Mir PPC. We've got got Mr. Alert. Oh boy, there's so I many. I want to thank all the beautiful party patrons, here. all of our sea monsters like Renan, no, yeah. David Hacken Strider. I saw in the death notes. Yeah, Nova K. Look we at got all those Dodger Cheesy notes. Bacon. Steve and Jill. Hey, they're even there. Any <laughs> yeah. gang of Sherlins that you can see possibly mm-hmm. read on episode 328 of Linux Weekly Daily, Daily Wednesday. Wednesday. Hey Woo-hoo. everyone. Hope you had a fun time like we did. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye.